It's always sunny in Philadelphia. The gang commits espionage. Spec by Keith Black. Cold open. Title, 357 AM. Title, Wednesday night. Title, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Dennis can be heard over the titles. Yeah, baby. Tell me what else you want me to do to you. Oh, you're nasty, Barbara. Tell me where to put the rubber duck. Fade in. Interior, Max bedroom, night. Mac and Frank sit huddled on the floor around a house phone, eavesdropping on Dennis's phone call. Give me the phone. No, Frank. God damn it, let it go. Why am I here if I'm not going to hear any smut? I don't know why you're here, Frank. You just wandered in here with these two prostitutes. Corner of the room. Two prostitutes sit against the wall in the corner, smoking cigarettes. <coughs> Hi, sugar. Damn it, Frank. Yeah, I'll put it in my butt. Just tell your lordship how far. Start with the beak. Frank drops a vial and cocaine spills all over the phone. Uh-oh. Frank tries dusting the phone and turns on the speaker. Hello? Is someone else there? Shit, hang up, hang up. Cocaine? Really? What? Keeps me jiving. Mac and Frank scurry next to the prostitutes and mimic interest. Oh, Jesus. Where'd you find these girls? Under the bridge with Charlie. We need to have a serious talk about that bridge, Frank. Max's bedroom door opens and Dennis walks in with the phone. What are you guys doing in here? Just banging prostitutes. Yeah, man, I'm like so horny right now and Frank is just lending a hand. I don't know how I feel about you banging prostitutes with my dad. Frank walks over to Dennis with his arms open. You're right, Dennis. This is a moment a father and a son should share. Give us the room, Mac. What? No. Get away from me, you creepy little man. I'm going to bed. Dennis stares down the two guys as he backs out of the room slowly, shutting the door behind him. Mac walks over to the wall and removes a picture, revealing a hidden cassette recorder. What's all that junk? This, Frank, is what I as an American like to call the Patriot Act. You see, Dennis has been acting shady for the past couple of weeks. Late night rendezvous, mysterious phone calls, at first I thought nothing of it, but when Charlie and I watched this CIA documentary and it all made sense. So you tapped his phone? God damn right I did. Title, The Gang Commits Espionage. Title, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Act 1, Fade In, Interior Patty's Pub, Day. Mac and Frank sit at the bar with a cassette player in front of them. So here's the plan. I'll keep spying on Dennis, and you do your business stuff to sell the tapes. I like it. Perverts will eat this shit up. Oh, totally. Now, my next concern is money. We ain't giving Dennis shit. Perfect. Dennis walks into the bar. Ain't giving Dennis shit of what, Frank? Perverts? Oh no, we were just saying. Wait, perverts? How long are you standing out there? Oh no, like two, five minutes. I always show up early and listen in before entering rooms. It's super weird, dude. No, it's not. It makes me appear clairvoyant. Nobody thinks you're clairvoyant. Charlie stands up from behind the bar. Oh, shit! You're a witch, Dennis? Jesus Christ, Charlie. What are you doing down there? I saw this commercial for the new James Bond film. Oh, it looks so cool. <coughs> Girls and Secret Gadgets? And a guy eats like the best cheeses. And I kind of want to be a spy. Or a witch. What are you even talking about? Those are in no way related. Did you sleep down there, Charlie? Of course I slept down there, Frank. You know why. Charlie stares intently at Frank, who stares back, but then backs down. Okay. I'm going to ignore whatever that was. But the Brits, they've got the right idea. Smooth-ass James Bond. One true king. Dee walks in the bar and over to the register. She begins taking money. Ah, that's hogwash. Monarchies have failed and crumpled time and time again. It's democracy and order that keeps things going. You're just saying that because you're, you'd be a peasant, Frank. Not a majestic lord like myself. I mean, look at this physique. This is the body of a monarch. As Dee empties the register, the drawer closes on her hands. Her knuckles begin to bleed. Ah, shit! They all turn towards Dee, who is standing at the door. When did you get here, Dee? Only woman in the bar, nobody knows. <laughs> Completely unnoticed. Like magic. Charlie looks Dee up and down suspiciously. 
What are you doing, Dee? Firstly, screw all you guys. Everyone sees me when I walk in a room. Heads turn, bitches. Secondly, I'm getting a burrito. So you steal money from the bar for a burrito? This is what I am talking about, guys. Dee's robbing us. Frank and Mac are doing drugs and banging prostitutes together. Charlie is sleeping in filth. This is chaos. We need order. Democratic order. Yeah, Frank. Secret Service Agent McDonald. A monarchy is what we need, and I shall be the one to lead it. Charlie begins taking cash out of the register. I don't know, guys. I think Dee and I are on the same page when I say communism seems pretty great. What are you talking about, Charlie? I'd rather be dead than red. Well, you're not an Indian, Max, so I'd say you're going to be fine. Free food and free housing. Everyone shares everything. It's great. How do you even know what communism is, Charlie? The waitress watches the History Channel a lot. God damn it, enough! Look, I'm putting a suggestion box in. Dennis scribbles suggestion box on a bar napkin and tapes it to an empty beer box. He places it on the bar. Tomorrow we select the three biggest problems in the bar and we'll each fix them our own way. Democracy is going to rule your British ass. Let's go, Frank. We've got some patriotism to spread. Mac and Frank walk towards the exit with their blueprints and cassette player. One last thing, Mac. I always thought you could kill a dragon. But now I just don't know. But I do know a knight in my court could. A knight? Come on, Mac. We have some business to attend to. Mac and Frank exit the bar. Interior, Patty's Pub, the next day. The gang stands around the suggestion box. It is overflowing with pieces of paper. All right, all right. Drum roll, please. Charlie, Mac, and Frank begin drum rolling on the bar as Dennis pulls a note out and reads. Eat shit. All right, good note, concise. Let's try again. Here we go. Kill yourselves. Well, that's just mean. I'm kind of hurt, honestly. <coughs> Come on, there's got to be more. Dennis grabs another note. The waitress looks like a bird. Just give up already. Okay, that could be anyone in here. To be clear, D. Shit. D grabs the note from Dennis. Oh, damn it, Frank. You signed this? Ha! It was a great suggestion. I wanted credit. Mac reaches over into the box. Move aside, suckers. Super suggestion coming your way. Mac pulls a condom from the box. Ugh. Son of a bitch! These suggestions blow, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, shit. Frank is right. Apart from D not looking like a bird anymore, this is pretty weak. Let's just fix each other's problems. We all have problems. I, I have like 12 that I can think of right now. You have specifically 12 problems right now. Well, you're being kind of catty, so now 13. See what you've done, D? You've made me unlucky. Just like a witch. That's great, Charlie. I love that. Dennis throws the suggestion box to the side. All right, Frank. What's this whole thing here? Dennis points to the cassette player and blueprints. Mac and I are trying to sell kids' audiobooks. How is the monarchy going to do that, eh? Dennis yanks the tape from Frank's hand. I'll show you how, you smug little man. My minions and I, and our legions of followers cannot be stopped. We are powerful and we are united. Mac, you with me? What? No, dude, I love America. Yeah, but you swayed yesterday. I thought I convinced you to be my knight. Yeah, I swayed because I was mentally patting down a dragon in case I ever have to fight one. It's called being prepared, Dennis. <coughs> First strike tactics. Split screen, America. Read a book. Well, Charlie and I both don't have anywhere to live since the city is fumigating all the buildings because of those child field rats. I told them our apartment didn't need fumigating, but they dragged me out. You were in there for two days during the fumigation, Charlie. It's a miracle you're even alive. But whatever, I'll fix that too. Dennis heads to the exit. You'll all be my subjects before long. Every single one of you. Dennis exits. Mac turns to Frank. What the hell, dude? Why'd you give him the tape? That wasn't the tape. That was just some other smut I took from Dennis's room to keep him busy. What the hell are you guys talking about? Charlie walks over next to Dee with a pen and notepad. Don't worry about it, Dee. Fly away from us, bird. Come on, Charlie. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and see how this plays out. Charlie pokes D with a pen. Ow! Why did you do that? So you can feel pain. Interesting. Charlie begins writing on his notepad. Whatever, dude. Let's go, Frank. Fade out. Continue. End Act 1. Act 2. Fade in. Interior, Patty's Pub. Back office, day. 
Frank and Matt sit at the desk around a tape recorder mic and computer set with a box of tapes to their side. The last time, Frank, you can't put the tape in the computer. Well, then how are we supposed to get it into, onto the web? CDs, MP3s, literally almost anything. Where's your phone? Right here. Frank pulls out a burner phone. That's a drug dealer phone. Corner of the office. The two prostitutes sit on the far right side of the desk. Oh, I have the same phone. What the hell, man? Why are these prostitutes still here? I had a group on for the weekend. Plus, we need them. I'm not doing that again, Frank. It's weird enough you and Charlie sleep together. No, no, it's nothing like that. We're going to use them to make more smut. Figured we'd get them for the weekend. Oh, I like where your head's at. Frank reaches over and presses play on the cassette player. All right, let's see what you got. Why, hello there, love, you sweet, tasty thing. What might I call you? You can call me Blonde Starlet. I'm 5'7", 120 pounds. Oh, a skinny little devil, aren't you? Well, I've got some tea and crumpets for you. Don't I, Miss Starlet? Dude, what the hell is going on? Why is it doing an accent? Frank pops the tape out and puts another one in. Ay, mia, mia, mia. Show Uncle Pablo what daddy likes. There is silence on the tape. Okay? Is that Mexican? Is he pretending to be Mexican now? It's crap, all of it. He is all over the place with these accents. Frank throws tapes across the office. Hey, watch it. Mac goes to hit stop on the cassette player, but hits fast forward. About the insurance. Shut it, number two. Mac looks over at the two prostitutes. She's definitely the sidekick. Just look at her. Not confident, slouched shoulders. A disappointment, really. Now, number one is the hero, Frank. Sexy hair, plump, supple breasts, lack of morals. Now, that would be great smut. They can see the lights. Super skank and side slut. See, Frank, we don't need Dennis. We can make our own smut. The tape stops rewinding and begins playing. Oh, yeah. I'm almost there. Me too. Give me your decree. Mac reaches over and hits stop. Oh, this sounds fun. I was in a school short film. Why is number two talking to me? Can you leave now? Who's going to do your bum ass skank tape then, huh? We are, obviously. The two prostitutes angrily stand up and grab their belongings. Screw you! Hey, wait, wait a minute, baby. I'm sorry. Let's be democratic here, Mac. We've got another two hours on the Groupon. Mac and Frank look at one another and have a silent conversation with facial expressions. Cut to... The two prostitutes stand in the basement in a taped-off circle. Mac stands holding a broom and a beer next to Cricket and Frank, who has a camera. Hey, thanks for inviting me over, guys. Shut up, Cricket. You're only here because we need to fill in Charlie since he's a he's batshit crazy with chemicals or some shit. Ready, Frank? Kills, yeah. Frank hits play on a jukebox on the ground and lifts the camera. Death metal begins playing. Mac pounds his beer and throws it against the wall. Let's fucking do this! Mac breaks the broom over his knee and throws the two broken pieces into the ring in front of the prostitutes. Three whores enter. One whore leaves. Cricket looks down and realizes he is standing inside the circle. Prostitute One picks up the broken broom handle and stabs Cricket in the leg. Ah, my leg! That's why she's number one. Interior, Dennis's bedroom, day. Dee climbs in through the bedroom window, wearing all black and holding a duffel bag. Oh, you think I'm a bird? Well, birds squat, so I'm moving it. What the hell? Dee drops her bag and looks over at a giant framed picture of Abraham Lincoln on the wall. The eyes on the picture move to look at Dee. Dennis, is that you? Ah, dang it. There is a crashing noise. Charlie, what are you doing back there? Are you spying on me? No, no, I was just, ah, son of a bitch. What are you doing in there? I'm, I'm trapped. There are like sex ropes and swings and all kinds of things in here. How did you even get in there? I don't know, Dee. I'm freaking out. Get me out of this sex closet. Dee walks over and tries pulling the hidden wall open by its hinges. It won't open! Oh my god! I think something went in me? Something is alive in here, Dee! Oh! Oh! I got it! I saw it on HGTV! Dee runs out of the room. Clanking can be heard in the kitchen. Dee! Okay, okay, I'm back! Here, try this. 
Dean mixes together a bunch of chemicals from the kitchen and pours some on the hinges to loosen them up. Push! Charlie hits the door and falls out of the hidden wall onto the ground, wrapped in a sex swing. He looks at the bowl of mixed ingredients. Did you make a potion, Dee? Why are you wearing all black? What? No, I'm... Dee looks around the bedroom. I'm doing the communist thing, sharing Dennis's wealth. Why are you on the wall? Charlie stands up quickly and picks up his notebook. Oh, just, you know, nothing. Research, science fiction theories, and etc. But, uh, yeah, so I got all the paperwork. Charlie walks over to the window and begins climbing out backwards. And, and research. Lots of meetings. Charlie taps his notepad, looks D up and down, then scurries down the fire escape. Exterior, Philadelphia sidewalk. Day. Dennis walks down the street talking to himself. All right. First things first. This king's got to find himself a queen. Dennis narrows in on a bookstore across the street with a beautiful Spanish woman Carla, standing out front, browsing outdoor materials. Why, hello there. Dennis walks over to the woman. She is holding a book. Excuse me, miss. Yes? I'm sorry, I couldn't help but notice you're holding the frog prints. Is that a children's book? Why, yes, it is. One of my own, in fact. Oh, really? That's perfect, just perfect. Excuse me? Oh, nothing, nothing. So, listen. Dennis leads in close. What drew you to writing children's stories? Oh, I don't know. I guess I always just had a fascination with fantasy. And kids are easy to please. I love that. Yeah, your passion, not pleasing kids. That outdid a little. Oh, you're funny. What's your name? Den Sir Dennis Reynolds the Fourth. Oh, my. Well, nice to meet you, Sir Dennis Reynolds. I'm Carla. I'm actually showcasing some of my children's books here tomorrow afternoon. Really, now? Dennis steps closer to Carla. Well, you know, Carl, I'm a bit of a writer myself, but for the blind. It's uh, part of my estate's charity. Oh my god, that's so sweet. The only thing sweet is seeing those blind little bastards smile when they hear my stories. Well, I would absolutely love to have you come and show some of your work to the kids tomorrow. For Queen Carla? Anything? <laughs> well, listen, I've got to get back to prepping, but it's tomorrow at 3 p.m. sharp. She pulls a card out of her pocket with her number and hands it to Dennis. It'll be really fun. There will be a dunk tank and everything, so don't be late. Carla walks into the bookstore. Dennis sniffs the card. You move, Frank. You will bow before me. Everyone will. Dennis looks across the street and sees a Hollywood costume shop and walks over. Interior Frank's apartment. Day. Mac and Frank sit around the computer listening. Reporting for duty, Super Skink. Glad you're here, Side Slug. There's been a spill done at the plant. Someone has to fill the hole. Well, I know a thing or two about filling holes, Super Skink. You're so hot when you're informed, Side Slug. Mac stops the computer. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it, Frank. Yeah, shit. What's our problem? We were so good earlier. You know what? We need to Daniel Day-Lewis this thing, bro. What do you mean? Not that acting. We can't just get into character. We have to be the characters. So? What do we do? We pop these puppies off and get us some blouses. Interior Dee's fumigated apartment. Day. Mac and Frank rummage around in Dee's closet, looking for clothes, wearing face masks. They're all so damn thin and long. Look at this. Who could wear this? Mac holds up a blouse that has arms twice the length of the torso. She has chimpanzee arms. You know, this explains why her knuckles are always bleeding. Charlie crosses the closet door with a flashlight. Charlie? Frank and Mac walk out of the closet into the bedroom. What are you doing here, dude? I'm looking for clues, man! Clues of what? That D's a witch! She's making potions, wearing all black, sneaking all around like a little black cat in the night. There's got to be clues. How long have you been in here, Charlie? Like, a bit, okay? Frank, has he been home? I've been with you. I don't know. Matt looks around at the destroyed apartment. All right, shit. None of us probably should be in here. And I'm pretty sure the mask you gave me is just paper, Frank. Matt crumbles the paper mask. Let's just get some of her shit and blame all of this on fumigators, cool? Cool. I'll drown her. 
If she's not a witch, she'll sink. It's the only way. Okay, buddy. Let's get you some fresh air. The three guys walk towards the exit with Mac pushing Charlie and Frank carrying a bunch of clothes from Dee's closet. Interior Patty's Pub. Day. Mac and Frank sit at the bar with Dee. Charlie sits in the back booth observing Dee, wearing garlic around his neck. Mac is drinking a water glass full of vodka. Why are you drinking straight vodka? Keeps me lean. No more beer calories. Trying to bulk up. There are literally just as many calories in vodka. It makes him classy, like James Bond. It makes him an alcoholic. Trumpets begin playing from outside the bar. Ladies and gentlemen, from the third borough of Philadelphia, your protector and unwavering leader, Sir Dennis Reynolds IV. The door opens and a Mexican kid, Julio, rolls a red carpet into the bar. Dennis enters wearing an elegant robe. Hello, subjects. Please, take a seat. I come bearing news of your pathetic little problems and how I, your sovereign solved them in a matter of hours. Julio! Julio runs over to Dennis's side and bows his head. Dennis whispers in his ear and Julio runs back out of the bar. Where did you get that kid, Dennis? I adopted him. You adopted a kid? There's a return policy. Don't worry about it. Get some cheap labor out of him for the day, then boom! I'll just drop him off at a fire station on my way home. You can't just drop him off at the fire station. He is fully grown. God damn it, Dee. Julio is not the point. Do you want somewhere to live? Do you? Yes. Then zip it, all right? Julio returns with a scepter and three embossed flyers and hands them to Dennis. Ah, uh, yes. Now we can begin. That's a nice scepter. Yeah. And look how plush that carpet is. As many of you know, I was tasked with providing an audience for Frank and Max's little stories. And provide an audience I have. In front of you there lies a flyer. Dennis carelessly throws the flyers at the gang. He hits Charlie in the head with one. Dee picks her flyer off the ground. What the shit is this? I'm so glad you asked, sweet Dee. This is an invitation for our dear artists Frank and Mac to privately showcase their stories and a perfect platform to solidify my reign as your supreme commander. What does this have to do with Charlie and I being homeless? You can stay at my place. I'll give you the keys at the event. Really? Yeah. Which reminds me, Mac, you should probably get a hotel for a bit. I think someone has been breaking in. It was like blood dragged across the floor and I lost all my sex tapes, which I now have to redo. Ah, uh, what the shit? You think someone is breaking in so you tell me to stay there? Well, yeah. I don't want to be murdered. You're a pawn. I thought that was clear. Whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is you all present yourselves before your king and queen tomorrow night. Queen? Who's the queen? The publisher lady. We're gonna bang. Julio! Julio runs back up next to Dennis and picks up Dennis's robes train and follows Dennis towards the door. See you there, bitches. Dennis and Julio exit. Mac stands up and spills a glass of vodka all over Dee's hands, burning her cut knuckles. Ah! Damn it, Mac! It burns! Dee stands up and runs over to the bathroom. Corner booth. The signs are all there. We are running out of time. I have to drown her, but how? Charlie looks down at the invitation on the table and sees the dunk tank drawn on the back. He smiles and crumbles the invitation in his hand and runs out the back door. I've got it! Cricket stands up from behind the bar, eating an egg with his body wrapped in bandages. Yeah, what's that all about? Ah, shit! Damn it, Cricket, why are you still here? Well, I can't walk. It took me seven hours just to get out of the basement. You guys locked the door and shut off the lights. Doesn't sound like us, Cricket. Interior, exterior, bookstore. Day. Carla organizes a small stage inside the bookstore. A dunk tank can be seen through the window next to the stage. Children file in and take their seats on the ground. Dennis walks up to Carla, wearing his robe and scepter. We all set to go. Oh, hi. I'm so glad you made it. When you didn't call, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I don't call women. Too personal. Okay. What are you wearing? Oh, this, uh... Dennis looks around at the kids. It's for the kids. Part of the story. It's a live performance type of thing. Just go with it. Oh my god, that's so great. The kids will love that. Here. 
Why don't you go ahead and pop this puppy in and get the kids warmed up? Dennis hands Carla the cassette tape. Oh, a tape. I've got to go freshen up and find the lighting guy. These fluorescents are terrible. I need to emphasize my masculine royal features. I'm all blown out up there. A bookstore employee crosses in the background. You there, book slave. Come here. Dennis walks off into the back of the store towards the employee. Mac and Frank enter the store dressed as prostitutes. I still don't know why you got to wear the garter, Frank. Because it makes me look busty. Don't be jealous I'm sexier than you. Whoa, dude. You are absolutely not sexier than me. Look at this body. If I was a guy, I would totally tear this ass up. Carla rushes over to Frank and Mac. Gentlemen, please, the kids. Hey, you the book lady? Who are you two? We're the show. Like what you see? Oh, you two must be with Sir Dennis. Well, the stage is all ready. You're welcome to begin any time. Frank walks over to the microphone. Maybe you and I begin something. Come on, Mac. Mac reluctantly walks away from Carla and over to Frank. Damn it, Frank. I was trying to bang the book lady. Mac can be heard over the microphone. I mean, come on, come on. Just read your script. Mac pulls a crinkled paper out of his pocket. Ladies and gentlemen, book lady. Today you're in for a real treat. We are here to tell you the story of Super Skank and Side Slut. Hi, I'm Side Slut. And I'm Super Skank. Hey, what the hell? I was going to be Super Skank. Yeah, that was never going to happen, dude. I switched the scripts almost immediately after we were done. My entire performance is based around Super Skank's backstory. What backstory? The whole being molested by Tranny's thing. What are you talking about, dude? That was a joke. Oh. Back of bookstore. Dennis walks up from the back of the bookstore and sees Frank and Mac on stage. Sons of bitches. Charlie runs up to Dennis with twine hung around his shoulder. Hey, Dennis. You have those keys for Dee? What? Uh, yeah, here. Dennis. Thanks. Dennis hands Charlie the keys. Thanks. Charlie runs outside. Dennis rushes up to the stage and pushes Frank and Mac to the side. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. My two assistants can be a little rambunctious at times. My name is Sir Dennis Reynolds IV, and I am here to be your god. Cut to exterior. Dee walks up to the front of the bookstore and sees the dunk tank with Dennis's house keys dangling above the water. Dennis, you're such a dick. Dee walks over and climbs up the tank to reach the keys. Cut to interior. Ladies and gentlemen, perk your ears up and prepare for auditory ambrosia. Vocal butter that will make your enemies bleed with envy. I'm here to tell you a story that words on a page couldn't possibly depict. A story of yours truly. The one true monarch of Philadelphia. Carla walks over and sets an old beat-up stereo on a stool. I found it in the basement. Hopefully it works. Shoo. Dennis hits the stereo with his fist like Fonzie, but nothing happens. He waits, then presses play. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so close. Oh my god, what is this? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I had planned, uh, but soak it in, kids. Uh, this is the miracle of life. Carla rushes from the back of the store to stop the stereo. Dude, that kind of sounds like D. What? No. Tell me I'm your little parakeet. Oh, shit. Ah! Through the window, Charlie pushes and holds D underwater in the dunk tank outside. Die, witch! Charlie and Dee wrestle until Charlie falls in. A large black man, transvestite, pulls Dee out of the tank. Oh, shit. If my place wasn't being fumigated, I would ride you into oblivion. Oh, shit, dude. You totally jerked off on the phone with your sister. Carla stops the stereo, but it intermittently plays. What? No, I... 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 Dennis stares off in shock. Oh, my God. Dennis begins dry heaving. Ah! Dee barges into the bookstore carried by the transvestite. You fucking fox! Everyone, please, the children. You all need to leave. Carla continues fiddling with the stereo. Tell me you want me. Ha! Where did you get? They're Dennis's sex tapes. You've been talking to Dennis the whole time. Oh my god, I'm gonna be sick. 
D begins <laughs> gagging. Carla fiddles with the stereo. Why won't he stop playing? Frank? Who the hell is that dude? Is that a tranny? Did you get molested by a tranny dude? My name is Hank. Mac begins walking towards the door. This is the best day of my life. It's method acting. We were doing method. Exterior bookstore. Day. Dennis walks out of the bookstore with a look of shock on his face next to Frank. Charlie walks up next to him, soaking wet. Hey, man. What was that all about inside? It was nothing. Everything is nothing. I'm nothing. Holy shit! Are you guys okay? Nothing happened, Charlie. I'm... I'm broken. Dennis turns and grabs Charlie's shoulders. I'll never get an erection again, Charlie. I've been meaning to ask. What's with the photo of Abraham Lincoln above your bed and all the sexy ropes, dude? It's kind of creepy. It was in case I were hooked up with a black girl. I wanted to know I'm cool with it, but that, but that dream is as dead as Martin Luther King, Charlie. What's this? We were all batshit an hour ago. Oh, it's the craziest thing. The chemicals from the fumigation are apparently are topical. I just needed to take a bath. When's the last time you bathed, Charlie? Right? Fade out. End act two. Tag in. Fade in. Dennis and Charlie stand in an outdated reception area. Dennis hits the bell repeatedly while holding a manila folder. Hello? Taxpayer here. I think they're ignoring you, dude. No. They are ignoring their civic responsibilities. Fucking American entitlement. Just let me have it. You can barely take care of yourself, Charlie. A firefighter walks from the back room. Oh, finally. Some services for my dollars. As we told you on the phone, Mr. Reynolds, we cannot take your adopted 14-year-old son. And as I told you, he isn't my son. Look at him. We look nothing alike. He's got you there. Sir, you, your friend, and your son need to leave. Right now. Dennis grabs the paperwork off the desk and turns toward the exit. Son of a bitch! Come on, Julio. Corner of the room. Julio stands up from the waiting area and exits the fire station with Dennis and Charlie. Cut to Charlie, Dennis, and Julio enter Dennis's Range Rover, where Frank and the transvestite, Hank, sit. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Hank. I'm really excited to get to know you guys. I hate you, Hank. Fade out. End of show.